Hey there, and welcome to your uh, quiz one video on topic six one through six four. It's basically an overview of energy. So we've got uh, a couple of questions we got to get through. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, uh, the first question is basically a statement, just reminding you to go back and visit the enduring understandings and learning objectives and essential knowledge on the first few pages of the packet that you get for every unit, because there are statements there that are literal questions, basically that will appear on your test. Um, use your book's glossary to define renewable and non-renewable energy. Um, uh, it's all about human time scale. Renewable energy is stuff that will come back within a given time frame. Uh, and that time frame is, is human in scale. So like trees, you can cut down trees and they'll come back. Um, something like the sun is actually a perpetual resource because within our human time frame, it's not going to go out. Um, Non-renewable means that uh, it only replenishes over millions of years. So essentially to humans, it can be exhausted. It can be used up. And so um, the, the big ones for that are fossil fuels, which is coal, oil, and natural gas, and then um, nuclear energy. Um, okay, so be able to recognize examples of renewable and non-renewable energy. Um, you can see that that's right here. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Um, non-renewable energy you can see and then renewable energy is all here um, all right so da -da -da -da. how much of the commercial energy used worldwide comes from renewable energy and from non-renewable energy that's super easy 90% of the world in the United States um, energy is provided by non-renewable sources and you can see that that is natural gas coal and oil and also nuclear power and then the other 10% comes from uh, renewable uh, stuff. Um, and this is just an overview. So again, if this, this uh, isn't, uh, you're like, well, what is that? It, we're gonna get to it in subsequent topics. Um, what are the three types of fossil fuels? All right, coal, oil, and natural gas. Um, and they're formed from ancient plant remains buried millions of years ago and subjected to intense heat and pressure. Um, coal is a solid, oil is a liquid, and natural gas is a, you know, gas. Um, why is the energy available and extracted high quality energy like oil, ultimately not the amount of energy that can be delivered to consumers? Um, it's because the way that it comes out of the earth is not the way that it's used. So you have to process it. Um, so it's just like a profit. Your, your net is, uh, how much, uh, energy do you get out of something versus how much energy does it take to harvest it? Um, and also then once you've harvested it and cleaned it up and gotten it ready to go, there are a lot of transformations of that energy. As an example, when you burn coal to to uh, when you burn coal to boil water to create the steam that turns the turbine, that turns the generator, that creates the electricity. Um, every time that you go from burning to boiling, to turning the turbine, to turning the generator to create the electricity, heat energy is lost at every one of those steps and you haven't even put it in wires yet to get to people's houses. Um, uh, what is net energy? I already went over what that is. How are low net energy sources made affordable to consumers? It is super, super basic. Um, just uh, um, right here, subsidies and tax breaks. So there are a lot of things like gasoline aren't as cheap as what we're paying for. And remember, subsidies and tax breaks, the government isn't another entity. The government is you. That You, you end up paying for this stuff via your taxes. Um, Take a look at this figure right here. Um, note the energy sources that have higher, medium, and net energies. You can see here. Um, and then now think about what is commonly used. Uh, commonly we use uh, coal, oil, and natural gas. Take a note of where those are. <coughs> so, uh, why do these differences exist? Um, the Industrial Revolution is based on creating high heat, which you can really only do through coal, oil, and natural gas. Then we discovered we could create electricity from that steam. 
So basically coal, oil, and natural gas are or were plentiful, uh, relatively easy to find, easy to dig up, not too hard to refine. So we use them largely because that is how things started. Um, you're going to notice that there are more efficient ways of producing electricity than just these bad boys. Why don't we do this hydropower and wind stuff yet? Because we don't. Um, also, when you burn stuff, you can burn stuff in the day, then the middle of the afternoon or the night. Things like uh, wind, as an example, doesn't blow constantly. Hydropower only works uh, when you're near a uh, river that flows fast enough to make that happen. Geothermal energy only works when you uh, have um, a pocket of water that's uh, close enough to magma to go ahead and boil on its own. So, you know, uh, solar power as another example, solar cells, um, that only works when the sun is shining. So that would require that instead of basing your entirety of, let's say, creating electricity out of coal, you just need uh, one power plant, one energy grid. In order to use all of these different diverse things, you would have to Diversify your grid. Get a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit of electricity here, a little bit here, um, and uh, rebuild that grid. So some of this is because this is just simply easier, and some of it is just because this is where we started first, so that's just kind of what we have continued to use. Um, what is the mo most widely used energy resource in the world? Um, note its two names and its states of matter. Um, the most widely used is called petroleum or what is called crude oil. Realize that when this comes out of the ground, it is black, it is gooey, it is sticky, it is a liquid. And it is a mixture of a whole bunch of different stuff. So that means that you do have to refine it. Um, that is something that I will address. It's a learning objective that is in technically this section, but um, the refinement process of oil is something I will discuss um, in the fossil fuel section. Of this particular unit. Um, what are common impurities found in petroleum? Um, oxygen, that's not a big deal because that's in the air, but sulfur and uh, nitrogen for sure. Those things are going to come up in our pollution unit because when those things are oxidized, which is what happens when you burn uh, stuff, it combines with oxygen, so you end up with sulfur dioxide and nitrogen um, uh, oxide and dioxide, and then when those things um, uh, react with water, that's where you can get some acid rain as an example. So there, these are the precursors that um, when they're released through combustion, through burning, uh, go on to create other problems. Uh, now the pollution part, you don't need to know. I'm just kind of floating it by you right now. Um, but you definitely need to know that nitrogen and sulfur are impurities. Okay, um, briefly describe where oil is found and how it is harvested. Um, do you realize you don't have these giant bubbles of, of oil. Um, in general, it's a lot like water in that it is, um, uh, you know, sometimes it's it's in a large de large deposit, but a lot of other times it is um, uh, in between layers of rock. It can either even be within the rock um, in the same way that some aquifers are, are um, little pockets of water like a sponge uh, underneath the ground. Um, so uh, yeah, so it's in it's in little pores of rock um, that all happen to be in the same place. So all right, uh, again, the extraction and the refinement process, we will discuss that a little bit more in a subsequent section. But what you do need to know about now is OPEC. Um, so let's go ahead and go here. You do not need to memorize these countries, but familiarize yourself generally with where most of them are found. And um, uh, I would know a couple. So OPEC is the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. That is not something that you would be asked to regurgitate on the national exam or on one of my tests. Just realize that it is a, a, uh, a loose organization of the 12 countries that produce most of the world's oil. Um, out of all of these... Um, uh, which two OPEC countries have the largest share of the world's proven oil reserves? So that's going to be Venezuela and Saudi Arabia. Um, so, you know, although Venezuela technically has more, Saudi Arabia actually um, uh, is considered the biggest uh, producer right here. So not only is it second highest, it produces. So if you're asked on the national exam uh, which country um, 
is uh, considered to be the biggest uh, producer of, of oil, uh, go with Saudi Arabia. Now you can see there are other countries like Nigeria, Qatar, um, uh, even Ecuador, um, but most of these are, are Middle Eastern countries. Uh, let's see. Uh, what role does OPEC play in world oil prices and production? It's exactly what you guessed. They pretty much control that. Um, they control how many barrels of oil they put out per year and how much that oil costs. All right. Um, let's see. What is shale oil? So, um, okay, also, oh, sorry, I forgot one. Uh, which country has the third lar largest oil reserve? That's going to be Canada. Um, and that is actually where um, there's the shale oil I'm going to talk about here in a second. So then which three countries consume the most oil? Uh, shocking no one, the United States first, China second, and Japan third. Um, on the national exam, you do need to know who uh, produces the most oil, who uses the most oil, produces the most coal, uses the most coal, blah, 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 blah. Um, and anytime we bring up a source of energy, uh, unless it's something like the sun, uh, be familiar with where you find the highest concentration of said source of energy. Um, okay, so uh, what is shale oil? So again, a lot of this crude oil stuff we'll talk about later, but there's shale oil right there. Um, shale is a kind of rock, and in between the pieces of rock, um, you have um, uh, a kind of oil that's caught up in there. It's called Kerrigan. Um, there is nothing in the in this uh, the course and exam description that says that you need to know that. Um, I'm just floating the name by you now, just in case. Um, but I'm not going to test or quiz you on that. Um, Kerrigan is just a form of uh, hydrocarbon um, that uh, you can refine into um, uh, different petroleum byproducts. Uh, like gasoline for one. Um, in which country is most shale oil harvested? So believe it or not, that is in the United States. Um, so shale oil is the US. Give two reasons for why this source of oil is not widely harvested. So um, the first one is that um, its net energy is low. So that means it takes a heck of a lot of energy to go ahead and harvest this. So it's just not, um, uh, it's not profitable. And then secondly, uh, it has a lot of environmental impacts. You can imagine that something that is deep underground and has a lot of impurities in it, which this does mention that it does, um, is, is problematic. And when I say harmful to the environment, think about all of the things that that means. Habitat destruction, um, uh, soil erosion, uh, any impurities that are in it are released into the surrounding uh, uh, environment. Um, the... Uh, you know, you can have the spills of the Kerrigan itself, uh, lots of fresh water use. That's going to be something you hear again and again. These processes to um, uh, refine and make the um, fossil fuels usable requires a lot of fresh water. All right. Um, what are oil or tar sands? Um, it is exactly what it sounds like. It is, uh, well, it's mostly clay. It contains uh, oil that you just literally scrape out of the ground. So, um, so it's all, again, all the things that you can think of. Habitat destruction. Um, you have soil erosion, and then that soil is going to go pollute nearby waterways. Um, you have pollution from the uh, fossil fuel using um, trucks and whatnot that are here. Um, these little guys right here, those are all vehicles. Um, so, yeah, the, you know, the usual, the usual suspects. Um... Let's see, in which country is most tar sand located? It's in Canada. This is why Canada has the third largest uh, proven oil reserve um, because of all of this uh, tar sand. Um, how is oil harvested from tar sand? Um, you can see, um, okay, so for this particular uh, quiz, I neglected to have you know this, but for the your test, you do need to know that the that the um, the harvestable um, hydrocarbon or form of oil that's in here is called bitumen or bitumen. Um, so anyway, here's what you do: you drill vertical wells, you pump in steam to melt it, and then you pump it out. Um, 
and you can see that you clear cut forests. So this uses a large amount of natural gas to heat the water um, to, so not only are you using fresh water, you have to heat it up. Um, so yeah, you can see again what the, what the impacts are here. Um, it's definitely a low uh, net energy source and you can see again that it has a lot of um, byproducts uh, that uh, lead to air pollution. Um, what is the main component in natural gas? It's methane or CH4. You need to be able to recognize both. Um, how does the burning of natural gas compare to the burning of other fossil fuel types? It's considered to be quote unquote the cleanest because when you burn this, the only thing that you're really releasing is carbon dioxide. There aren't really any sulfur or um, uh, nitrogen compounds. And then you can see that uh, for the same amount of energy, when you burn this completely, you're also producing less carbon dioxide. Remember, CO2 is a product of combustion. Um, so, da -da -da -da, look at 1412 on 430. Yes, the different forms of coal and then peat. Uh, remember these are in reverse alphabetical order. Um, more heat, more pressure, your uh, hydrocarbons. A hydrocarbon is hydrogens and carbons put together in a long chain. Um, your hydrocarbons get squished closer together, which means you have more energy per unit volume. And then also as you're squeezing, the, the water comes out and so um, the, the drier it is, the more completely it burns and the hotter it burns. So you can imagine that anthracite, it goes peat, lignite, uh, um, bituminous coal, anthracite. Um, anthracite is the most prized. Um, which three countries have the largest proven reserves of coal? Oh, here's why the United States has been manufacturing electricity out of coal for so long because it's the US, Russia, and China. Um, in terms of production, China definitely outstrips us. Um, what does it mean if they have the third largest reserve but they produce by far the most coal? It's They're very efficient at it and they also are pretty ruthless um, as to where they harvest. Uh, not as many environmental laws, if any. And you can see the United States is second there. So this right here uh, should explain why it is so much of our um, Electricity has been made out of uh, coal for so long. And then in terms of consumption, again, this right here, the consumption of coal by China is why that is also so high. Um, let's see. And when they say consumption, it can be everything from burning coal straight up for fire to uh, using coal to create electricity. Um, let's see. Four different types, blah, blah, blah three countries with the most of everything. Um, and then uh, biomass is the last intro thing. And again, I know I'm skipping a lot of stuff here, but um, we're going to come back to this stuff. So let me see, I feel like I've 457 and 458. Ooh. Maybe where cogeneration is. Sorry, kiddos. Put the pages in order of numbers and not in the order in which I need to find stuff. So let me go to 475. All right. So biomass is the last uh, type of main um, energy source that you want to take a look at. So you've got largely wood and coal. In real art, it's char charcoal. Charcoal is not coal. Charcoal is um, partially burnt wood, and it makes the um, the uh, hydrocarbons more available to its use. Did I put the right page for that? 475 to 476. I also listed some of this stuff. Meh. It talks about producing energy here. Um, what types of countries use biomass as a primary energy source? It's mainly for heating and cooking, and you find this in, as you can see here, less developed countries. That is, um, and 95% of the energy used in the poorest countries, so um, absolutely for sure. Um, you can see that it's more, biomass is technically more than just wood. Um, 
uh, wood wastes and agricultural waste. So you're talking about um, like uh, uh, sawdust. And you can see agricultural wastes, what those are. And really you can put animal dung into this category as well. Um, and then cogeneration is another thing to be aware of. Um, cogeneration isn't a type of energy as much as it is a philosophy of energy use. So here's basically what it is. To me, it is if you're an industry and you're not doing cogeneration, you're just letting money go out the door. Um, cogeneration is producing two useful sources of energy from the same fuel source. So for example, steam used for generating electricity in a power and industrial plant can be captured and used to heat the plant and other nearby buildings rather than just letting that heat go out into the environment. Um, so uh, it, it's just making sure that you're being smart in the way that you are, are using your energy. And in general, that second form of energy that is used is heat. And in general, it is used to heat whatever building um, is using uh, that, that energy source for something else. So remember again, when you burn the coal to create the steam, to turn the turbine, to turn the generator, to create the electricity, when that steam is done turning the turbine, you can then direct it through pipes through the floor of a building and use that to heat up uh, the building, especially in the winter time, instead of paying for some of the electricity that you just made to run the heater. So again, it's just about being smart. Um, good for the environment because you're using uh, less fossil fuels in that instant, but then also good for your wallet. All right, and that is the sum total. I know that I went through that pretty quickly, but... Um, it's, it's, there's a lot of information there, but it's pretty basic. Again, you're really focusing on the different types of energy. Where do you find those types of energy? The, the main ones, obviously we haven't touched on everything. Um, and then who produces the most, who uses the most? Um, we're not really, in, in names of things, we're not really interested in how things are harvested or how they're refined or what kind of pollution they create quite yet. Um, just kind of be aware of the basics. All right, we're done.